<laughs> it's another day and I get to work on my garden again. Here's where I left off from the last session. As you can see, I've put down a bit of filler, but there's still lots of space to fill. And I plan to include some Echeveria secunda glocha between the cracks because those things make for very good clumps. I think they would be able to hold the moisture properly or at least they would be able to prevent further erosion. Unfortunately, as you know, I'm using a very cheap potting mix. As you can see, here's a closer look. There's lots of wood chips. It would have been fine if the wood chips are small, but these ones are rather huge. This means that it's not going to retain as much water as I want to, yet at the same time it would erode quite easily. To fix this, I would need to amend the soil with something more fine in consistency. Here at the top, I've used some of the premium succulent and cacti potting mix. I don't usually use them in my landscapes because they're quite expensive, but I think in this case, this would be an okay exception. Another thing that I could do is just to buy one of the more, I don't know, one of the more organic potting mix. Because I'm pretty sure that those ones won't have as much wood chips as this one. I think the texture on those ones would be better when working on something like this. I'll be playing around with my inventory and see what I can do. I'll be doing this based on texture, so one side might, might not look like the other side. It won't be perfectly symmetrical because sometimes per a perfect symmetry would be a bit boring. I'm going to start with the top first. So I'll be checking out my collection and see what plant material I can use. One of the things I had in mind are these Echeveria agavoides lemaire. I think it's about time they move out in the open again. I've got more than these other two trays here. So I'll play around with the idea of using them. I just have to see if I can find a suitable spot for them. Something else I could play around with are the Sedum clavatums. So this one here. I have another one here. More here. This one here. And I should have a few more pots of them. Here's one of the pots. And here's yet another pot. I should have enough material to work with. plug the gaps along the sides by the rocks I would need to harvest some glocas and I can see a lot of pups here so I'll go ahead and do that
I'm short on the sedum gold mound so I'm going to harvest a clump from out here we've got lots growing out in the front One more clump of sedum gold mound and I'm going to use it to complete the gaps. I'm having second thoughts about placing the Cape Blanco so close to the edge. I have a couple of reasons for it. The first one is that there's a transition from light blue-green towards yellow. And the white, the purple, the purple and white sorts of breaks that. So there's an abrupt change in hue. And the second reason is that this spot is more exposed to the sun. So the Cape Blanco will dry out faster so what i'm thinking of now is placing them more towards the back so they'll be lining up the area after the chalk sticks Blanco out of the way, I now have to think of a transition between the, the blues here and the yellows here. The thing about transitions, you don't only have to worry about the colors, you also have to worry about textures. So after much thinking, I've decided I'll use the blue feather. I have a bunch of them over there, so I'll have to harvest several heads. I've rounded up a bunch of them. Here we go, there's a transition of color and texture now from the sedum gold mound towards the elegance. So as you can see, the gold mound looks quite branchy and has slender leaves. So does the blue mist because they are the same species, only different colors. Then once moving over to the blue, blue green here, we now move to the pale blue from the elegance. And finally, we got blues at the back care of the chalk sticks. So that takes care of the cool colors on the front and now I think I can start working on the back.
I think it's about time I broke out the sedums. These are the sedum clavatum. This is a Sedeveria hameli. This was labeled as sedum voodoo. And according to research, the species name would be Superius. So this is exactly the same as the one that we know as Dragon's Blood. I'm not exactly sure what this one is, but it looks like some sort of a mesembe. Mesembrianthemum. I'll know more when it starts flowering. I'm also considering using this pops of Francesco Baldi. I've got a whole tray here. Well, not just a tray. I've got a bunch of them. When they grow and properly pruned, they would look something like this, low-lying. But eventually they would clump up and trail. I don't mind the tendency to trail because as you can see, this area is elevated. So I won't mind the look. I'll be lining the edges using the more mature specimens that I have. Then I'll use the pops as fillers. Now that I'm done reinforcing some of the sedums, I think it's about time that I work on the gaps between the pots. We are now looking at the gap between the tall pot and the bowls. And in here, I'm thinking of connecting the, the pots and the bowls with something tall. In my mind, I'm thinking of going for the voodoo. I usually use the darker colors as a wall or divider or pretty much an anchor. It basically allows me to reset the design and work on another pattern. So it works as some sort of edging for me. Now that I've allowed for a break in the design, this allows me a bit of creative freedom to work on the remaining space however I want. Right now, I'm contemplating not going symmetrical anymore. I would still be using fillers but different types. So I'm going for slightly different textures on each side. On one side, I might be going with the Sidum Clavatum. The other side, I might go with the Sedeveria Hameli. And just in case I run out, I have a huge clump of them growing at the back. You know what the best part of this is? It's being able to harvest your own plants.
it has been a long day, but I finally did it. I'm pretty satisfied with what I've done with the arc. And as you can tell, work on the arc is pretty much behind me, both literally and figuratively. I might work on the arc from time to time, mainly just adjusting some of the plants, the clumps, and how they fill up. You know, I have to guide them somehow. So otherwise, if I just let them do their thing, it might be a bit chaotic. Also, I'm not sure if you have noticed, but the plants behind me, especially the larger echeverias, they have already gained some color. This is because they have been subject to more sunlight than before. The goal of the design is to look its best once winter comes, because I have the stress colors of these plants in mind. What you're seeing right now may not be the colors that I had in mind, but check back again around winter. That's about six months from now. Because winter starts around June. So yeah, that's six months. I really think you would love how it would look by then. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this. You could also check out my socials. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And by the time that you watch this, it's already 2018. And the date right now as of recording is the 31st of December, 2017. And I'm pretty much going out with a bang. And until the next episode, see ya.